Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. I hope all of you are doing well today or tonight. Uh, tonight I have something a little bit different. It's a poetry thing, a poem, as it were. <laughs> um, instead of a fairy tale. I was gonna do a fairy tale this week, but I felt like I didn't really want to read this, the specific one I had in mind, so I wanted to do something different. What I do have, though, is The Raven by Edgar Allan Poe. Um, I'm sure plenty of you have read it in the past, but I just feel like reading it. It's fun. It's, it's neat, as it were. <laughs> so, I hope you guys can sit back, relax, maybe try to fall asleep, maybe try, try to listen along, whatever you want to do. And you can go ahead and start. Once upon a midnight jury, while I pondered, weak and weary, over many a quaint and curious volume of forgotten lore. While I nodded, nearly napping, suddenly there came a tapping, as of someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. Tis some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door, only this and nothing more. Uh, distinctly, I remember it, it was in the bleak December. And each separate dying ember wrought its ghost upon the floor. Eagerly I wished the morrow, vainly I, ha I had thought to borrow from my buck's surcrease of sorrow. Sorrow for the lost Lenore. For the wear and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Nameless here forevermore. And the silken, sad, and certain rustling of each purple curtain thrilled me. Filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, to the still, to still the beating of my heart, I sit repeating, "'Tis some visitor intruding entrance at my chamber door, some light visitor intruding entrance at my chamber door, that this is it, this it is, and nothing more." Presently, my soul grew stronger, hesitating then no longer. Sir, I s said I, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore, but the fact is I was napping, so, and so gently you came rapping, and so faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door. That I scarce was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door, darkness there, and no nothing more. Deep into that darkness peering, long I stood there wondering, fearing, doubting, dreaming. Dreams no, ma no mortal ever dared to dream before. But the silence was broken, and the stillness gave no token, and the only word there was spoken was a whispered word, Lenore. This I whispered and echoed and murmured back the word, Lenore, merely thus and nothing more. Back into the chamber, turning, all my soul within me burning. Soon again I heard a tapping, so went louder than before. Surely, said I, surely that is something that my window lattice. Let me see then what threat, what threat is in this mystery explore. Let my heart be still a moment in this mystery explore. Tis the wind and nothing more. Open here I flung the shutter when... With many a flirt and flutter in their set to stately raven of the stately days of yore, not the least obscience made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with mine of lord or lady perch above my chamber door, perch upon a bust of palace just bit above my chamber door, perch and sat and nothing more. Then this ebony bird, beguiling my sad fancy into smiling by the grave of certain decorum of the countenance of war. Though that crest be short and shaven, thou, I said, it short, art sure no craven, ghastly grin, and ate your raven, wandering from the nightly shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on the night Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled this ungainly fowl to hear discourse so plainly, though its answer little meaning, little revelance bore. For we cannot help agreeing that no living being yet ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door, bird or beast upon the sculpted bust above his chamber door, with such a name as Nevermore. But the raven, sitting lonely on the placid bu bus, spoke only that one word, as if his soul in that one word he did outpour, nothing farther than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely more than muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, Nevermore. Startled by the, at the stillness broken by the reply so aptly spoken, Doubtless, said I, what it others is, 
its only stock is sore, caught from some un unhappy master whom unmerciful disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burning bore, till the dirges of his hope that melancholy burning bore of never, never more. But the raven still beguiling all my fancy in the smiling straight, I wheeled a cushioned seat in front of the bird and bust and door. Then upon the velvet seeking, I betook myself into leaking fancy unto fancy, thinking what this ominous bird of yore, what this grim, ungainly, ghastly, gotten ominous bird of yore meant in croaking nevermore. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressed to the fowl whose fiery eyes all burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamp light is gloated o'er. But whose velvet violet lining with the lamp light gloated o'er, she shall press, ah, nevermore. Then methought the air grew dense, the, the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, swung by Sarah from his fall, footfalls tinkled on the tough floor. Wretch, I cried, that God hath let thee, by these angels he hath set thee, respite, respite the, in the penth from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh, quaff this kind of penth, and forget this lost Lenore, quote the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, think of evil prophet still, if birth or, a bird or devil, whether tempter sent, or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore, desolate yet all undaunting on this desert land enchanted, on this home by horror haunted, tell me truly, I implore, is there, is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me, I implore. Quoth the raven nevermore. Prophet, said I, think an evil prophet still, a bird or devil. It, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell the soul of a sorrow laden if, with, within the distant Iden, it shall class the Satan, Satan maiden whom the angels name Lenore, class the wearing radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, I shrieked, up, upstarting. Get thee back into the tetist, and the night's platonian shore. Leave no black plume as a token of that lie thou soul hath spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken, quit the bus above my door, take thy break from out my heart, and take thy form from off my door, quoth the raven nevermore. And the raven never flit flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pal bus, the palace just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon's that is dreaming, in the lamplight o'er him, streaming through a shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow that lies floating on the door shall be left in nevermore. And that's it. I haven't done a poem yet on this channel, and I think that was a good start. I really liked it. Though I did hand choose this one. So, like, 8 out of 10. Yeah, <laughs> I don't really have that much to say about it because, like, I I don't want to turn this into some sort of literature class. Um, but I liked it. It's creepy, dark, and you know, it's it's a poem about grief and loss. I hope all of you have a good night. And hopefully a raven doesn't come over to your house and screams never more at you. <laughs> See you guys later.